Oh. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. I'm here with Thomas, Travis. What's up, everybody? And we're going to do a little hunt review. We didn't of, do a uh, mic check. We did. We're good. I, got, right. you. I got you. All right. So we would have had another podcast, but... Uh, malfunctions. A couple of malfunctions. Um, one on my part, one on Travis's, so... We're, I think we're good now. We got Actually, recording they're the camera. both on Titus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Not the first one. Well, well anyways, never. so... We're going to say a shout out. We're going to do this on the podcast and we're going to do it. And uh, you won't hurt his feelings if you don't like it. He said that. He told you guys, it's used to specifically, Darren Hempker sent us two cases of what's called ski. Some of you from back east, Midwest, probably know about all about this and probably stoked. But <coughs> he's trying to say, and I already know this ain't going to happen because I've already tried it. He's trying to say that this is. Mountain Dew on roids. Oh, really? It's not. It's energy In drink? my opinion. No, it, it's got caffeine, though. It's got like 70 milligrams of caffeine. But it's not considered an energy drink. No, it's just supposed to be a soda. But you know how usually like the lemon lime, or this is what, orange mm -hmm. and lemon? Yeah. Don't ever have so, caffeine in it? This actually has caffeine. Mm. So what do you think it tastes like? Me? Yeah. I had more of an orange feel to it, like a like lemon orange. More just like, like a it squirt? Says. No, it's no. different. I don't know if you get it. It almost seems like it, there's not a ton of flavor. But anyways, mm -hmm. regardless, the dude spent 40 bucks to ship these here. So Wow. <laughs> I was like, man, you didn't need to do that, dude. But wow, he wanted us to thank try Thank you very it. much. Yeah. Thanks. So let's. So this let's isn't try. his company? No. No, this is. People know all about this, I guess. Not, they're not around here. They're not in California, but they're called Ski. S-K-I. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> it reminds me of a Sprite mixed with a little orange in there. Yeah. It tastes like a Sierra Mist with a couple drops of, uh, um, what's that, orange orange soda. Yeah. the Fanta. Fanta. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's what it tastes like to me. It's not bad. But there's actually caffeine in this. So it's good, though. It's not nothing, nothing wrong with it. It's different. It's not bad at all, really. But anyways, guys, what was his want, name? This is Darren. Darren, thanks, Darren. Yep. Um, these been around since 1956, so it's been around a while. It's but an anyways, Eastern company. I don't know if it's Eastern or if it's Midwest. Let me see what does it say on here. Interesting. I was just surprised. There's 70. Any milligrams. any of you cheer wine drinkers? <laughs> They're even saying there might be calling a out to you. Thing. That's another <clears throat> company that we don't really have out here. That yeah. Our grandpa's from uh, North Carolina, and he was big into cheer wine. I actually got Travis, do you say grandpa or grandpa? Grandpa. Anyway, grandpa, I bought him a couple grandpa, bottles grandpa. of cheer wine like three or four years ago, and he just thought that was like the greatest thing ever. Stuff's pretty good. Yeah. So <clears throat> That's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. And I barely got it in the freezer very long, so it's not super cold, but... Anyways, we're going to just do a hunt review of a hunt that me and Thomas and Travis had two or three weeks ago. I don't know how long it's been. But uh, it seemed like a long it was time fun. ago. Yeah. We killed six birds, and it yeah. was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Specifically, knowledge. <clears throat> I missed at least one or two, so we should have had more birds than that. Probably. I thought you only missed one, and Travis missed one. Wasn't I for sure missed one. I missed the first one. That was it, though, right? Yeah, we missed two birds, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not. Not bad, but getting the jitters out. <clears throat> I just blew it. On, honestly, that was like a layup. Well, I'm sure that mine was banded. <laughs> That's how it always is. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to see how long ago that was. That was, dude. That was a month ago. You're kidding. Today, I thought I was being exaggerated, saying three to, weeks. One, today it was a month. That's ago. sad. <laughs> that is sad. That I mean, our season's season is almost over. Yeah, it's going by fast. It's going down. Down, down, down. And I was just telling Travis, I don't know if you've looked at the weather, but um, the forecast isn't looking too good. South winds. Mild. South winds and mild. Can you turn the red one, the knob up there to the top right, one click down? Just one click. Thank you. So, I, I don't know. Let's talk about it. Travis, what? It was an afternoon hunt. <clears throat> Local refuge afternoon hunt. Um, and it was a spot that Thomas had hunted. How many? How, how long before that? Did you, were you out there the week before? 
I don't know because there was because there you was had a time some that, success that I quit hunting it for for like uh, over a week before we went back out there again. Okay. Okay. But I don't I don't remember if that was before this hunt or not. <clears throat> Well, I think that Talon may have went there in between the time that you went. And so he's the one that kind of gave me a heads up, right? No, because you went there and had success. So I had I been remember. there quite a bit. Trav- Thomas I was the remember. first one that snuck out there. Yeah. Yeah. I had be- basically been hunting there like the whole season. There's like, there's been probably four or five hunt days that I've been here that I haven't went out there. So. Between me and uh, that dude is flying. <laughs> Scaring every cat in the neighborhood. <laughs> Cats are going everywhere. <clears throat> Sorry, there's a guy riding a quad out front. But anyways, yeah, I'd, I'd seen the birds there already, but yeah. So we, we kind of knew. Yeah. But you were there on the optimal day. We weren't mm-hmm. there on the optimal day, I would say. Yeah. I actually, so, actually, I can double check that. We had I took my it. son out uh, hunting for his first duck hunt ever and had like one of those pretty special days. Actually, it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, actually, yes. It was right after this. So I had been there the hunt day before the day uh, us three went out there. Okay. And I had shot, um, I shot. But that wasn't seven. your first time either, though. No, that wasn't my first time. Uh-uh. But that particular day, I shot um, seven. But I lost two Drake Mallards. Shot uh, six Drake Mallards and a hen Mallard. I lost two in the Tullys. Um, but my son, he's five. Um, that was his first time out ever duck hunting. So it was pretty pretty special. It was calm, warm day. It was easy for him. We just went out for an afternoon hunt. And um, it was just one of those good days. There was nobody out there. There was some birds working and had a great day. So... Us three went out the next hunt day, uh, just try to capitalize and get some more birds, and uh, we ended up with six. Um, but the birds that we shot is just so awesome. You know, it's not those passing shots; it's the shots where those birds come in ten, fifteen, twenty-five yards, locked, working. It's the duck hunting that w- we enjoy most. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool because we. Had- I mean, what do we have out there? Well, that day we had quite a bit of uh, motion on the water, right? Because it was no wind. Every so movement. we had, yeah, I think we, we had, had every I think we had like oh, yeah. six uh, packable Dakota flocked heads, right? Mm-hmm. That's and it. we had, I think we had six floaters, but we had five, six pulsators. Six pulsators. I brought mine and a swim. You brought yours, and I we didn't use the swimmer though. I turned that off because the water yeah. wasn't conducive for that thing. Yeah, um, that thing's a lot louder, I think, too. You know what? It's super loud. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't have. I w- personally, I wouldn't have purchased that one. I, I would have either. bought another pulsator. You guys can learn that from us. Yeah, learn from us our mistakes. It's not mistakes. You're just. It's part of getting better. But yeah, dude, it's so loud. It's and loud. Like, and here's the thing. And the you only have to time have deeper it's okay, water. You have to have deeper water to run do, that thing. It's not have to be that deep, but it has to be a little deeper. Well, if there's grass in the water, dude, that's too. what I'm saying. It was just grassy trash. Because I've ran it in water. At other refuges that are only 12, 8, 12 inches deep, mm-hmm. and it runs fine. Really? <clears throat> yeah, but yeah. But is. what I was going to say is the loudness of it. And it's the very only time loud. you can use it where the birds aren't going to hear it, to, in wind, my opinion, wind, is wind. wind then wind. you don't need it. Yeah, yeah, you don't. I mean, I used it the other day when it was windy and it looked fine. Uh huh. But I was like, did I really need it? No. Yeah. A lot of extra weight just for. It's heavy. <clears throat> just for that. It's heavy. I should have just bought another pulsator. Yeah, I haven't. That's to me. That's my favorite so far. It's still there's still some things that's like, man, I wish there was a little bit better. Let on. me ask you something. About it. What's your thoughts? Detailed thoughts on those pulsators right now, as of now. I think, as of right now, they're my favorite water motion decoy. That, um, like you don't have to pull it like a motion ducks. Like, I think that probably looks maybe just a little bit better, but then you still have to pull it. The pulsator, you don't have to touch at all, um, but I I feel like there's they're not uh, they're not cheap. They're like 170, 150 bucks, but I feel like they're slightly cheaply made. Mm. Like uh, the bottom the bottom of the decoy, like the decoy itself looks good, but the bottom of it they screwed into the the plastic and 
has a real tendency to just want to pull out and then possibly get some water in there too. None of them have stopped working. This is my second year with two of them, and then I bought two more this year, so I have four. And there's and all of them still work, which is pretty good. Um, their battery life still works great. Man, probably six hours at least. At least six hours. Are you talking about so? What I noticed on yours, and I think it's, I can tell it's going to start happening in mine. It's your two older ones, is that where you adapt it in to make it start spitting is like loose in there and it, it's hard to plug it in because it's wanting to push back up inside. So not, there. not just that, but also the whole piece. The well, that, yeah, I know, yeah. but were you, re, were you referring to that too? I think no, he's referring more to the plates so and the screws that's an on issue. the side. That's another issue. That's there's, a, there's one of them that you plug the little bilge pump. Uh, into the battery, which is actually in the decoy itself. And you plug it in, and one of them, the internal part of the connector, it's, like, gotten pretty loose. So you're trying to push it in there, and it's moving around and stuff. I wonder how you could fix that. I wonder, is there any way to fix that ourselves? You could probably just unscrew it and pull it out and maybe try to fix it from the inside, but... You know, I haven't done it yet. I mean, it still works and everything, so it's fine. Another thing, too, is the the bottom of the decoy, the piece that holds your bilge pump, they have, like, two little plastic prongs, and there's really no reason to take the pump off, but I had, I had and those little plastic, um, like, clips are really... They break really, really easy. Really? Well, guess what happened to me the other day when I was by myself? Mm. I, I've never even taken mine off because I know you were talking about that. I went to grab it to throw to like put it over somewhere, and when I did, I must have like grabbed those clamps, mm. and it just shot out and fell in the water. Oh, really? The bilge. And I've never even taken that off, which I know it's meant for you to be able to take off. It oh. just seemed like it came off really easy. Uh, uh, I yeah. take mine off after, 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 after every hunt, I take mine off. Because what I what I'm experiencing is where the little propellers are in there. There's it's building up a uh, like grass and stuff gets mm, in there, uh, yeah. and it wraps in a loop in there. And I'm just doing it to keep it cleaned out. Yeah. So are you cleaning that? I take it apart every time, and then I go between those like, little slots where the water sucks in, and clean uh, those out. Clean all those. Yeah, out but you too. don't have to take that off to do that though, do you? Um, there's or just, just stuff, easier there's to stuff do. getting stuck in there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, but I, especially, I, I, dude, especially where we use them in, on this yeah. hunt that we're talking about, mm-hmm. that's but, really murky, nasty water. Yeah, but I I like them because I think that that spraying water action is something like, you, like Tom said, you don't have to touch it, and so it keeps producing ripples in the water. Um, the splash, I think, if there's any sun, that reflections mm-hmm. water reflects off that. Mm-hmm. And I've I mean, even that hunt there, I've seen birds be flying. And literally crane their necks down to look at that thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's it's you know an attention getter. It can be seen we, from a long distance. I think we know there's a lot of different situations. I mean, there's so many different situations just in California alone. But then you go back east and north and south and everything. You can't one thing doesn't like isn't perfect for everywhere. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> a lot of our hunts where these work great is like. Absolutely dead still calm days where sound is like sound can travel like you could hear a pin drop like there's no sound there's no trees we hunt in the grasslands like um, calm clear over you know days with no sound we were talking about that swimmer being loud and one thing about that is the motor itself would go for probably five seconds or whatever and you could just hear it just running loud like just yeah. Yeah. and there's no doubt that those birds can hear that one thing that i kind of like about those pulsators was that it's just a short burst it and the water almost kind of covers up the sound slightly like mm. you can still hear it yeah for sure but i don't feel like the sound is so far over the top where the the motion of the decoy you know yeah it, i feel the, like the, motion the noise is better doesn't than cancel, the sound the noise doesn't cancel out right. the effects um, right, right, the, uh, and it's not even a. I'd say it's a quarter of what yeah. the swimmer mm-hmm. is. Oh no, the swimmer goes for like five seconds. Right. Well, I meant a quarter of the sound, the volume. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and really, the duration. with the splashing, it kind of kills some of that mm-hmm. yeah. motor noise, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Or bilge pump, whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, what do you so? In my opinion, 
I think our calling was great and everything sounded good, but on that day, but I'm pretty sure if I had to say they came in more. F- I mean, it's a combo. I'm not saying don't call, but like if we didn't have that, how do you think it would have went? If we didn't have I think the call, decoys? I think the calls was just a substitute, yeah. just a, a, an addition to the motion. Um, you know, typically I, that's the first time I had set up on that pond in that way where the bird, I encountered the birds before they even reached the decoys because the decoys were on the opposite side of us. What I'm typically hunting that pond, usually I'm on the the far side of the decoys. Were they positioned to the left or the right of me? Where they see the decoys first, you're saying? Yes. Decoys are in between you and the typical bird oh, flight oh, path. Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the yeah. path of flight <clears throat> versus yeah. I'm before the decoys. Mm-hmm. And to just the way we were set up, you know, they, that's f- kind of the way I it feel had like to be. you have to work like a ton harder if your decoys look like garbage with your calling. I feel like you have to work so much harder to even get the same effect on the bird. You know what I mean? Mm. Like these birds were just like, like locked, like 100% committed, you know, really no doubts where the calling sounded good and the decoys to me looked good. Then if you have dead stale decoys not moving at all, like statues and then calling birds, I don't know. What do you think? I think you could have the, the prettiest decoys in the world sitting out there on a dead calm day. Don't matter. It's not going to matter. You yeah. have to have motion. Mm-hmm. Because birds don't just sit there stationary. No. You know, they, they there has to be some kind of motion on the water, I think. I agree. I mean, that's something we've preached and preached and preached to, our, to ourselves, not trying to tell other people what to do, no. but <clears throat> just experience. I feel like myself personally, I've leaned on those pulsators a little more than I should have this year and paid the price for it because really, a few times I feel like I should have used the motion ducks. Because a pulsator, well, okay, I'll tell you this. Not necessarily in California, but Washington. Because you cannot use those pulsators in Washington. You mm-hmm. cannot use a battery operated spinner any, wing. Any bit battery anything. operated device. So one day, specifically, and I don't remember what episode that was, but we were, I was a little lazy about it. Like we, had, I think we had talked about it when we were at the truck saying, do we need the motion ducks? And we're like, no, there's wind. We look at her up. We know better than to trust wind and what the weatherman says. You'll never, ever, ever be mad about having a motion decoy in your bag. Yeah. When if you're you out think in the it's going to be 20 mile an hour never, winds, take never. it anyways. Take yeah. it anyways. What's the worst that'll happen? Ah, we don't need to put that Now out. you got to carry it back out. whoop de doo Yeah. And that's really what it came down is me being lazy about carrying it out. Out there and back in. And we're like, man, it's going to be windy all day. Dude, you talk about one of the stalest, calmest days <laughs> out there. We had little moments of wind, and when we did, they came right in the decoys. Mm-hmm. And I I would lay money down right now. Yeah, if we would have had that motion ducks, I'm not saying we would have killed more birds, not, like because we still did decent, but I think we would have technically, and sooner than staying out there all day. Yeah. Because Thomas isn't scared to do this, and neither are you. To not even take nothing but four decoys of the motion ducks because there's no point of having 60 decoys out there, all these stagnant and stale, like you said, fully flocked, just bad to the bone looking, not moving. And then one little corner over here where they're just moving. Yeah. How's that going to do you any good? You're defeating the purpose. Yeah. And if we would, I really think if we would have had when it was sta- stale, calm, because there was plenty of birds, and we would have been pulling on that motion ducks, it would have been totally different. And we had talked about it. We should go get it. We should go get it. I was like, Thomas, go get it. I was, tra- Harrison, go get it. You go get it. I, you know? Yeah, you're afraid to leave and then because that's the when end, the bird's going to come. Yeah. And, then- and then at the end of the day, we're like, why didn't we just go get that? It was literally yeah. 10 minutes there and 10 minutes back. Yeah. But, go- so. but going back to the hunt that we were on, it was really cool because we, you know, we weren't all shooting at the same bird. We, mm-hmm. we took our time. You know, each one, took one of us, we took turns shooting. Mm-hmm. And um, that, w- that was cool, you know. It's fun doing it like that. And that's not something we ever used to do. No, we really didn't. <laughs> Never. It was free. It was free for all. <laughs> Who could draw? And it, you know what? It causes more misses. I'll tell you right now. I know I will miss. I miss more on average in the long run when I know there's two other dudes gonna be shooting at it because yeah. you're rushing your shot. Yeah, you probably are. You are. 
And usually the guy that shoots second or third kills the bird because he now they're fl- they're flushing up and flaring. Yeah, and yeah. he took his time. And when I don't have that pressure on me, I, I, we all shot good. I missed the f- I missed the first yeah, bird that came over, and then the one of the birds I killed, I missed the, the first only, shot on him, and then crushed him on that next one. Yeah, the only time you you regret doing that is yeah, if a bird gets out. But I mean, I feel like our shooting average is pretty pretty good, pretty decent. You know, when you see that, like I the miss that I had, psh, the bird was probably twenty yards or whatever. That's like a that's a bummer to watch a green head come in and then. Take off. What do you think you did? Do you think you overlet him? <clears throat> mm, I think I possibly just didn't focus enough. Like sometimes I have a tendency to just look at the bird and pull up and shoot versus like aiming, intent to kill, you know? Like, yeah, aiming, being focused and serious instead of. Why just, are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I know well, why you're looking at me like that because he's saying every time I shoot is an intent to kill. Is that what you're going to huh? think? Is that what was going through your head? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I honestly I, don't know. It's one of those things that's like, how did I miss? Like, yeah. what Like what did I do? Like, where where did I go wrong? You what? replay that 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 oh. in your mind over more and over than and over. killing five birds. You replay yeah. that one that got away yeah. uh-huh. over and over in your mind. Yeah. Like the one that I shot at, I was turned wrong when he came in. Mm. I, See, wish you guys I, would, I, got, I wish you guys would have shot that one. Yeah. yeah. I was turned wrong. I stumbled. Yeah. And then partial sun... It was just you guys were in a much better. You position were looking down the sun, and weren't you too, Thomas? No, not on my first shot. No, I had no excuse. That mm-hmm. bird should have been dead. You know, we've made, yeah, we've all made a lot better shots. I, I don't know. I don't know. Should have had it. Well, we've all done it. So, well, but, you know, like when we were in in uh, uh, up way up north in California, look how bad I shot for both those days, mm-hmm. Thursday and Saturday. It was like, I was rough. That was rough. For me, I hate going through those slumps like that. Yeah, the hunt we were on, but you weren't real. You didn't slump; you just missed. It wasn't like it's. It was happened over mine. It was over and over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Miss two, hit one. Miss two, miss. You know, hit one. It's like, ugh. how many birds would you have lost though in that pond without without Rocky? Two or three for sure. Two you lost them easily. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Two hundred <clears> percent. <throat> the the first one I shot, and they were all stone dead. It wasn't like well, the one was wounded. The one that we creeped up on because he landed. Well, the first one there was that shot. one that you shot that uh, where they landed. Remember, he took off. Wasn't think, that that one? No. Was that the dub, the pair? I think your first bird. It was the first. Your set first of the bird day. was like pretty alive still. Or yeah, it was yours. It was. And he was in the toolies. We jumped him. Yeah, that's and right. When he jumped him, we he all chased three. Him. We all three yeah. went over there, and I was a little to the left of the bird. Rocky went in the toolies. And he came out. All of a sudden, the the mallard starts flapping, flapping yeah, that way. Like, and Rocky's hot on his tail, right behind him. Yeah, and we would never found that, that bird. Was, yeah, we would have never. He for was, sure yeah, he was bird. way too loud to find. That was cool. Yeah, you can almost kiss Rocky, a uh, dog, when they do something like that, because mm-hmm. every little bird matters, man. You don't realize how much it adds up until. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I would have had my lifetime of birds, oh that my I've goodness, lost, how many more mer- birds would you have in your hand? I bet you'd have a few more bands in your hand, too. I probably would. I've lost my share of mallards and thick, hunting thick tulies, you know what I'm saying? Because you know they're there, and you try to drop them, where you, and you know you don't go for doubles. You shoot singles because you take your eye off where that bird falls, you're never going to find right. it. And I've yeah. literally locked on to birds that fell you know, 15, 20 yards from me and looked for 30 and 40 minutes and never found them. Yeah. And stone cold them, but just because you're hunting such thick tulies. I mean, I've hunted tulies where... You could you if you fell over straight into them, you wouldn't even hit the water. Yeah, right. They're, oh, that, yeah. they're that thick. Right. I mean, they're like a wall. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I don't know, eight nine feet high. Yep. Oh yeah, it's actually insane how. And Rocky's actually went in one in toolies like that and came out with oh, the yeah, bird. He'll come out. I've watched him just throwing his yep. body across it. I was surprised he even had enough drive to do that. I was like, okay. Comes out the other back side of it, twenty yards away, has yeah. a bird in his mouth. I'm like, what? Or how many times have you seen where you mark a bird go in, right? And he's going somewhere else. And he's going somewhere else, yeah. and he brings it out. You know? Oh, like, I've, what's he doing over there? I stopped getting on to. I remember getting when he first started getting his. Yeah, nose, you think he's going the wrong way? I'm like, get over here! Like you're almost here. Like you're not even close to him, and he comes. You're like, okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Yeah, let you him do, do what, it. Do what you're gonna do. What he does. Yeah. So, I'm glad I took Rocky because I think I asked you guys to. Do you want me to bring? Yeah, no. Because yeah. it's such kind of. 
actually where we were wasn't that hard to get into, but sometimes it's just the less is better out there. You just don't want to take stuff. And I was like, do I really want to take him? And your guys were like, bring him. <laughs> I think you both said that. I was like, all right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know how much action we were going to have, though. Mm-hmm. But he was hidden. He was right in the shadows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, we, that was a perfect spot. We tooled him up. Oh, it was, dude. Uh-huh. It's like a little parking garage. In there. It was. And it wasn't like he was, because sometimes it's hard with the dog. If the sun's on him or depending on where he's facing, he's putting his head out looking around, which I don't mind that because I want him to be able to kind of keep an eye on it. But I don't know. It was just perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Worked out really good. I actually fun. hunted the same pond a few weeks later and didn't shoot mallards, but uh, lost a beautiful Drake cinnamon. Mm. Stinking bird, man. I didn't want to shoot him again on the water. I didn't want to blow him away. And he got in the Tuleys like, for 30, 40 minutes. How far was he away when you could have shot him again? 25. Oh, yeah, he would have. Another kill. thing we have to deal with, guys, <clears throat> in case you're not really understanding what we're talking about, we're hunting the grasslands, like you said, thick, tall Tuleys, but also uh, plowed ponds that you cannot like double and triple plow yeah you can't you can't make you can't get anywhere fast at all you know so by the time you get over to a bird if it landed if it fell 30 40 50 yards away it takes a little bit of time so it gives birds plenty of time to get away so that's another yeah. thing we have to fight mm-hmm. i don't it's know me. i'm always the kind of person i'm always hesitant to shoot a bird again mm-hmm. i've gotten better at that i do now because yeah. i even with the dog, you know what I stopped doing? I used to shoot him again. Then <coughs> when I got a dog, I stopped because I'm like, he'll get him. He'll get him. Mm-hmm. But then you guys remember when I said, you know what? We have to shoot him again because then he'll spend time chasing him around out there forever, especially yeah. if they're really not hurt that bad. So not only will it flare other birds that are trying to come in, but also it wearing him down. If he's got three or four guys to retrieve 28 birds for, yeah. you know, then he's just not getting out there quick. So it was like kind of like, okay. The blueing that shoot I shot last day. week, he he fell and he came up. His head was up. Mm. I mean, he fell hard, but he he was flapping all the way down. He hit the mm. water. And he came up. I was going to shoot him again, and Talon was in front of me, just a position. Um, when I shot at him, he wasn't in front of me, but the way he fell, mm-hmm. he landed in front of me, and Talon was like, "You want me to shoot him?" I'm like, "You're gonna blow him away," because Talon was mm. shooting a full choke. I'm like, "Well, I don't want a blueing to get away," and boom, he shot it, but it didn't. It didn't, really do nothing. it didn't really do anything. It's kind of it. funny, though, dude, because I've shot... <laughs> I thought he was going <laughs> to just tweak it. I think it kind of proves that shooting him on the wire just shows how much don't hit him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think you're going to decapitate their head, and then I've really never seen that actually happen. Even that goose. I was like 12 yards yeah. from that goose with didn't the full chuck. You would think it was, his, head was still, <laughs> his head was still connected. <laughs> he had a little bit of blood coming out, but it was like, okay, wow. Yeah. That's I was honestly God, I was expecting it to take his head off. Really? Yeah. yeah just I the, really was. The concentration yeah. of I was curious. Shot. I was curious to the see the most the, the most damage I've done to a duck this year was that mallard in that pond. Just about almost took his whole neck off. How cool would that have been? <laughs> That's what I was wanting. It felt <laughs> so good. <laughs> How close was he? He was close to him. He was like 15 yards. Oh, you a, aimed, you aimed a, on that one. With a full choke. That wasn't an extra full? Uh-uh. No. You took that thing out, huh? Fine, just decided you didn't really care yeah, for it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I still haven't patterned either of them. Hmm. I shot good with that extra full. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, but, I put, rifle. but I put my factory choke back in. You know what it was? You let Travis... Deter you no, from there that. was some there was a different reason. I don't know. No, it was Travis. He was con- he's constantly writing stuff about it. Mm. Bothered you. I don't remember now. I mean, let him even got Talon going back to modify. I didn't tell nobody to Oh, Talon's going back? Is he? Is he really? Why? What he's, he's been, been sh- missing he, birds. Say he was missing. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> he ba- he his beads broke off, dude. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> he put the bead back on. Dude, he was so stoked because he was hitting good and then he broke his bead off and totally psychologically jacked him up. <laughs> yeah. I don't That's, know. I've always shot modified. I'll die shooting modified. Just hey, I've never tried to change anybody's mind. I know, but you know, trendy <laughs> YouTuber. It, it's not. <laughs> it's it's not trendy. Nah. <laughs> People, you're you're the trendy person because everybody thinks it's got to be modified, modified, modified. No, that's what I've that's what I've always shot. I never know. shot. Anything I'm just messing around. Hey, you know what? I'm always looking to improve. So. You know, that's why you always talk about shooting your second shot. I just shoot one. They're dead. 
<laughs> Whatever works. Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> He'll put put yeah. me down where now I this don't hit nothing on the next day, time. Ain't gonna hit I'm getting Didn't he say jacked. he missed like two days in a row? He couldn't hit nothing? That was a couple months <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, all right, guys. Well, I hope you guys hopefully learned something from our mistakes and, and also our, the things that we do right and it comes together. So anyways, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next one.